to God's truth. There's, I mean, we, she knows I've shared this story with her plenty of times, and you'll probably hear it in, in my message a little bit later, because it's a big part of my testimony, a big part of who I am today is because of Shelly Abney. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her, because she was obedient to follow God's calling on her life then. She was serving at a retreat. Once again, like I said, she has a heart for service like no other. And she, at the retreat, you know, I got to meet her. And I had no female friends at that time outside of my sister and maybe my sister's friends. <laughs> I just never really seemed to get along with women, which is kind of odd when God calls you to minister to them, right? <laughs> but... Um, I just, I don't know. There was just, I just struggled in that area. And we were standing talking one night after group. And I told her, I said, God told me I need some female friends. And she says, well, that's awesome because God's called me to be a friend of women. And so in that, our friendship started. And it has blossomed. And it is an honor to have her as my friend, as my pastor, and as just somebody who has, like I said, come alongside and made this all happen. Shelly is absolutely amazing at all that she does. And I can't think of anybody better that God could have brought into my life to be that friend that I needed. So thank you. I'm going to hand it off to her and just let God speak through her. Wow. Well, thank you, Faye. <laughs> it is so neat, as Cherie spoke a while ago, about just how he intertwines, you know, so many of us in our lives, and um, we're in and out of each other's lives, or it could be seasons. It's, it's just so neat, even looking out in some of your faces, um, seeing you, some of you from Who's Your Harvest. It's just neat, just how God is always guiding us, leading us, directing us. Um, yeah, that was, meeting Faye was an awesome blessing, and then we just had a, just a few years apart, maybe 20, <laughs> maybe 18, I don't know, but that's all right. God restores and brings things back and gets us back on track. That's just what he's good at doing. All right. What I felt to do um, when we were worshiping, I was outside when you all were praying for whoever had the brain bleed. Well, then Jason sent me a message, and I wasn't realizing at the time it was Emma. So I'd like us all to stand, and, and if you pray in the Spirit, um, I want you guys to use your prayer language, and I just felt to release. Um, this sweet Emma is, I think, 18 or 19 years old. Um, it's Alicia and Mike Tao's granddaughter. She had a major breakthrough Wednesday night. Um, Mike came to the altar. We all anointed one of the prayer cloths from the water. And um, anoint we had a powerful, she had a breakthrough immediately. Like, like Alicia text hours later and talked about this breakthrough she had. So I just feel like, you know, and I don't even, you know, want to give the enemy one ounce of credit, but I just feel like this is just a jab, um, you know, a tactic, and so I just thought if we could war a minute, um, I just felt to release some things, so as we just get praying in the spirit, um, I'll speak in English and just release some things over Emma. Father, we just thank you. We come to you, Lord. We glorify you for who you are. Lord, we saw your hand on Emma's life just a few days ago. We saw breakthrough come forth over this young lady's life. Emma, we call you forth to the fullness of the things of God. We decree with our mouth that you are healed, Emma, that the light and glory of Jesus Christ go forth from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, that we send in Jesus' light and glory to do a mighty healing and restoration in your body. God, that your hand of deliverance, your outstretched arm of deliverance would be about her in this attack. We speak health and wholeness and healing to you, Emma. You are a child of the Most High God. You have a call on your life, and you have a purpose and a plan. And we war for your life. We war for healing for you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Go forth with your warrior angels and minister to her. Thank you, Father. 
Jesus, we thank you that the power of the Holy Ghost seals this and it is done. We trust you, Father, with her life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all for praying. Just something during worship, Jason texted me and I just happened to look and I was like, ah, oh, that was Emma you all were praying for. I, just something rose up within me. You know, it's like this righteous anger that, no, you know, this isn't going to happen. Um, God has a plan and a purpose. I've never met. This is one of the granddaughters I've not met of Mike and Alicia. So uh, just be be watching in your spirit here if you don't go home later and be praying for Emma. That's <laughs> how the Lord works, isn't it? All right. Well, it's always hard and tough after we eat. <laughs> don't fall asleep on me. <laughs> anyway. Um, you know, just sometimes this is hard, just being up here, you know what I mean? Like we prepare, we, we ask the Lord what he wants us to do and then it's time and I laughed at Tammy today, we were laughing, I said, I just like don't even wanna do this really. <laughs> so, but um, it is so funny, none of us knew what the other was gonna be speaking and just sitting here listening to Tammy and Cherie, I'm just laughing because you're gonna hear some of it again. <laughs> Obviously, he's just drilling this in our heads and in our spirits. So let me introduce um, myself. Obviously, I'm Shelly, and uh, Faye and I have known each other for quite some time. It's just an honor, and um, I'm so humbled to even that she asked me to do this and be a part of the team. So we'll just see here what happens. So Jason and I, um, there's our five sons. So we have two Jareds, a Tyler, a Dusty, and an Austin. <laughs> um, we have 10 grandchildren, and um, two haven't began, and a few more are wanting more. So we're not stopping at the number 10. I don't know if she has that picture. That's okay. So that was just taken a couple weeks ago, believe it or not. We have uh, two seven-year-olds, a six-year-old, a couple five-year-olds, um, one getting ready to be five, one getting ready to be three, or is it four? Oh my gosh, I can't remember all of them. Um, the two little girls on the, on the bottom step, one is one and a half, and the one on the left just turned one. So we have, we have fun when we're all together. It's a wild, wild bunch. <laughs> They are a blessing. With three were adopted, um, which I just love that. So our first girl, Hope, in the second row, um, she was adopted first. Austin and his wife, they were having trouble conceiving. So for three and a half years, um, they thought, we'll go the foster care route. And so they received Hope in February. And about two weeks later, re received Elijah and Caden. And they knew with hope they would have the option to adopt. So they started the process right away with her. And Elijah and Caden, they finally did get to adopt as well. So it's just been a blessing. You know, we know that uh, we are adopted into the father's family. So it's just a, a depiction of what, you know, God, just who God is. So um, we just love these kids. And they are fun to be around, as you all know. <laughs> so they call Jason Poppy, and I'm Yaya. So that are, that are, that's our names. There are so many neat names now, just besides Grandma and Grandpa. But, and that's, those are great names, too. <laughs> so, anyway, all right. Is that all for that? Oh, OK. We'll get to that in just a minute. OK. So Jason and I were. Uh, asked of the Lord to come to Martinsville. It was about um, four and a half years ago, maybe five years ago. So 2018, he says, go to Martinsville. So we did. We said yes. That's what all the yes shirts are about. Um, he basically has led us to everything you see, every way that we function, basically. He's brought us some awesome leadership, brought us some great help. Uh, great core members, so um, we are thankful for just what he's doing in this body here at Life of Love. Um, Jason and I co-pastor, and um, I love 
Um, I remember Prophet Bob, Bob Schreckengast, who all of you here know him. He's well known around central Indiana. Um, he had a word about, I'm a connector. <laughs> and it didn't take me real long to figure out what all that means. <laughs> so I'm kind of the connector and want to get people, um, I, I just love people. So, you know, I want to connect. I want to make sure everything's going well. Jason, obviously, he's the preacher. <laughs> he's the evangelist. He's coming after you. <laughs> going after the ones who need Jesus. So not that I'm not. It's just kind of different ways. I love that too. Just like every one of you sitting out here, you have your ways that you minister and God uses you with the people that you're around. It is no different with us. So I wanted to share that a little bit. We are, um, I guess I can share this. It's just kind of new news. Um, we will be moving over around the sidewalk into a building that's uh, three times the size as this. So hopefully in April, we will be opening up over there. The old Fastenal building next to it, which has all the pictures in the window of different tools, that will be a daycare. So we plan to start a daycare for uh, Martinsville people. So be praying about those things. We don't know the fullness of all of it, <laughs> but um, this is what seems to be what is on God's heart right now. So we are going with it. And um, you know, when the owner calls you and says, hey, there's a building opening up, and there's two buildings opening up, <laughs> and he is ecstatic about the daycare. So um, we have had favor with, with this owner, and it's been a blessing with, which, with, with how God is moving in all of it. All right. I really don't like talking much about myself, so I'm going on with this. <laughs> I love Tammy. She's like, oh, she has all these pictures and all this. And I'm just like, I don't even know what to say about me. Obviously, we love our families, you know. But um, I didn't think much more than that. So you all know I love my family. You know you've seen the little kids around. They come visit sometimes. So, oh, yes. How can I forget Lou and Brady? We have two um, poodle mix Labradoodle, and she's Lou's a Newfoundland poodle. So I am always walking the park with the dogs, playing frisbee with the dogs, <laughs> grooming the dogs, giving them baths. Yeah, so anyway, you know, they're like our kids. The kids move out, and then you get dogs to replace them. <laughs> what is that? I seriously used to laugh and think, why is my dad like so into these little dogs? Well, now I know. The kids moved out and <laughs> we fall in love with our pets. So anyway, all right. So I do have a goal. So I, I felt like the Lord said, start with a goal. So my goal is to get you all to a place of encountering God's immeasurable love, pursuing the fullness of him in your lives so that you'll be confident to go out, do all that he's created you to do. And I plan on sharing various resources that will help you do that. How's that? So mine will be a little different. My, um, it's not really a lot of testimony, but it's ways that um, you guys can further your walk with the Lord and be all you can be to enhance God's kingdom. That's what we're supposed to be doing, right? All right, so saying that, I'm going to go into Matthew 10, 7, and 8. I love this scripture. I remember being in high school and thinking, how fun would this be? <laughs> you know, so this is what it says. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Anybody else feel like that's fun? Sounds fun? Like, well, that's not boring. I mean, I thought that as a teenager. So um, when we are followers of Jesus, we definitely need to be doing the things in which he did. And um, no matter what is in us that could be stopping us, you know, to, pat, to get through those things, to be able to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, and cast out demons. It says, as you go. So when we're followers of Jesus, what are we doing? We're going after him. We're following him. Um, we, were, we lived in Plainfield, on the outskirts of Plainfield, when God said, go to Martinsville. We had been here for three years, but we had moved 
we've RV'd full time. We felt within our spirits just that tugging. Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? Just have anyone ever else been there? <laughs> just in this limbo of what are we doing? So um, when God said do it, we, we end up coming down for about the first seven months, um, meeting on Thursday nights at the park, and would go back and live in our RV. It all worked out to where we officially opened as a church, and um, we moved back into one of our rentals. So that's, that's a whole other story there. But it was a rental for about 20 years. <laughs> so we are redoing it. Anyway, so as followers of Jesus, we want to make sure we are doing where he's lead, going where he's leading us, right? The freer we get in Jesus, the more confident we will be in building his kingdom here on this earth. Um, one tool that the Lord personally had me use is um, this book here by Katie Zuza, Healing the Wounded Soul. Don't know if anyone has heard of her. She has a powerful uh, soul healing ministry. Um, the Lord led me to her. It wasn't exactly this book, but um, probably in 2007, maybe, and she was in Muncie several times. So I'd go up to Ball State and um, just, it was a powerful ministry, let me tell you that. Let me, I'm going to read this because I, I'm, I mean, I just love all her material. I don't, has anyone, can I see a raise of hands if anyone's heard of Katie Zuza? Okay, several of you. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what I want to read a little bit, just a little excerpt and then go on. When Christ went down in death at the cross, you went down with him, dying to sin. Likewise, you've come up to new life with him through his resurrection. Why is this important? Countless Christians are using the cross, as they should, to battle sickness, demonic assault, issues of every kind. However, if they stop there, they'll not find total deliverance or experience the new, abundant life that Christ won for us. The Bible says, we went down in death at the cross but find newness through his resurrection. What is so vital about all this? Everything. The power that comes to you from the resurrection can totally transform every part of your life. It can heal your soul, fix your relationships, save your marriage, bring back your kids, prosper your business, and quicken your physical body. The Apostle Paul acknowledged how important it is. He wrote, in Philippians 3.10, for my determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly, and that I may in that same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection which it exerts over believers. Isn't that powerful? As I studied, I was quick to see the reason behind the surprising statement. For the word power here is the Greek word dynamis, and in English it is dunamis. When I looked it up, I saw why Paul had such interest in this power. Here are just a few meanings. Power for performing miracles the power and influence that belongs to riches and wealth, to be excellent of soul. You know, there's several places in the word, and if you would do a study, how God restores our soul. You know, our soul is made up of our mind, will, and emotions. And so that is a part of us that holds trauma, unforgiveness, rejection, um, guilt, shame, you know, anything that some of these ladies have already discussed, it, it's held in our soul. You know, our spirit is saved, and we are walking on this path of following Jesus. But what will be encouraging to you, and how I have experienced it is, as my soul has been healed, I have been, um, my gifts have increased and accelerated. Does that make sense? So, um... God always has used me. Even in high school, I knew I had a gift of healing. I didn't know the fullness of it, 
Um, mainly it was just on myself, like I had TMJ, I, had, I just had other issues, and I would just speak. Um, I mean, it wasn't a word of faith movement or anything that I, it wasn't that attitude. It was just like I knew enough because I loved the New Testament and I read on healing a lot of, in Mark. I was just always in Mark for some reason. Well, obviously, if I have a healing <laughs> anointing, that's where the Lord would train me. But um, I would just speak to these issues and they would just be healed. So I really didn't understand the full. I just went with it, you know, I just kind of, it could be a gift of faith. I'm not really sure, but... Um, I would just always be healed. Um, early on in church, um, I would be used. Sometimes the pastor would call me up, or I would just be led of the Holy Spirit and go to somebody, and their issues would be healed. So I just would operate in that way. But I'm telling you, um, when I received the baptis baptism of the Holy Spirit, I was about 20 or 21, and I had three syllables three little words and for nine years but when God sent me to Brownsville Revival <laughs> um, July 96 um, my heart was I didn't want to go back to Indiana the way I went down so Lord change me you know the one of those cries one of those hearts cries so when I was at the altar it was just like uh, the Lord just took things from me, filled me with his light and glory. I had more than three words in my prayer language. I knew I would raise the dead. I knew my healing ministry would take off, and all that happened. So um, I'm telling you, it, it was such a difference. I said, Lord, was I even saved as a sixth grader? And he said, well, of course you were. And I was baptized as a freshman. And it, none of that negated anything. It's just the, the power. You know, I, from sixth grade on, I was in a charismatic church. So I always saw the Holy Spirit operate. Nothing was really goofy. I never thought anything was weird. Um, there is a way of being decent and in order. And I feel like I was in that, um, that setting. But when I went to ask for the Holy Spirit... I didn't like how they would try to make you say what they said. And this was, I mean, I'm almost 58. So this was, I was a six, I was probably by this time high school, um, late in high school. So it was a turnoff to me how I was going to get the Holy Spirit because I didn't want someone coming up and telling me, repeat after me. So that to me was a turnoff. So I remember being 20, another big charismatic meeting that night and the same thing, you know, this was several years later, it was the same thing, and of course I wasn't going to just repeat mumble jumbo out of my mouth to appease somebody, so I went home, and the next morning I'm just on the floor praying, and I said, Lord, you know, I have always wanted the Holy Spirit, I've seen this since a sixth grader, I've seen how you, the Holy Spirit's operated in services, I want the fullness of everything, but how is this going to happen if I I just don't want to repeat after somebody. Is That just seemed fake to me. And immediately he showed me a chalkboard and he wrote Shalaka Rema Delente. So there it was. There's my three words. I had those for nine, nine years. And I said them all the time. I mean, it's just what I did. You have total control. I mean, I know everyone here has mentioned the Holy Spirit. I don't know how people live life without the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, discernment, there are many things, you know, just within our spirit. Um, you may say it's mother's intuition. It could be, that could be a, a gift from the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit does represent the mother in nurturing. And so I'm not saying it can't be the Holy Spirit, but just that, um, you know, it's just like a, a discernment or something. You know, you just, some things you know just aren't right, right? I mean, so I feel like that was one of one of my first gifts that I had. Um, I love serving the Lord. I love seeing, because when you read the word, and I read so much in Mark, I wanted to see miracles happen. I, I mean, I didn't doubt, I never doubted it. It was just like, I mean, no one could come up to me even as a high schooler and tell me this isn't for today. You know, some churches and some people may believe that, but it is, it is for today and needed today just to show people the love of God.
There have been many people healed, not even saved. You know, so many street ministries are happening now to where they're going up and God's using healing to get the person saved, or at least, hey, I'm God. You know, I love you. I see you. So he can use healing ministry any way he wants to. You know, we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And so I have loved hearing, um, and many of you here, I do know your testimony. So there is power in that. You know, don't, um, not that we're to look back, look forward into what God's doing, right? We should always stay focused and look ahead. I want to read this one last thing here. What we just did a while ago when you were all praying and I was just decreeing. The Bible says, this is again from Katie's book, you will decree a thing and it will be established for you. That's in Job 22, 28. And again, it's not to be a weird name it and claim it or say it and it's going to happen. It's just, it, there's a part within our spirit we know it's true. This is God's word. And um, just during worship, when I felt that for Emma, you know, I just, something rose up that we have got to war for her. So thank you for participating in that. You know, in my spirit, I'm expecting a change just because God is so good. And, you know, this young woman right now can't war for her life. So this is how intercession is um, done. And then we see the results from it. I do want to share real quick. Um, when I got back from Brownsville, there would be probably 13, 14 different times I would go over someone who had died. Many of them were untimely deaths, and it was just by the Spirit. Some of them I knew, some of them I didn't, and um, I would just release life. And not one time did they wake and rise, nor did I have did that have an effect on me? I didn't care. I, it was just up to God. There's nothing with me. I'm just going to go. When I knew something in Brownsville happened to me, I got up from that altar and I knew I'd raise the dead. I just would go to the dead people just to practice, just to see. I wasn't discouraged if it didn't happen. You know, heaven's an amazing place. Maybe they have something to do with wanting to stay. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just practicing and that's all it is, just to see where my faith was. Um, but one day in August 2017, Jason was in Martinsville working and we still were at the RV and he was in um, a head-on collision and, and died in a wreck. And um, I was out grilling and just happened to think, well, why isn't he home yet? He called and he should already be home. Well, his phone you know my phone rings and it says Jason I said oh where are you at and it was an EMT guy he said hey your husband's been in an accident you need to get to IU Methodist as soon as possible so my question was can you tell me how bad it is and he said I can't tell you anything just get the hospital so I just hung the phone up turned the grill off I had my labradoodles <laughs> I had to get to my son's home but what happened was as soon as I turned um, on the deck something from heaven fell on me and I turned towards the Mooresville area because it happened at the Gray's cafeteria intersection and I just released the light and glory of Jesus Christ over Jason Abney's body that from the top of his head to the soles of his feet any broken bone would be re repaired that any um I, I mean I did not know he was dead I was calling him to life in the scripture where it says um, you shall live and declare the works of the Lord you shall live and not die I was speaking that it was just like I was just warring for him I didn't shed a tear for three days what happened was um, we get to the hospital and they did say his left side like the left arm was broke the left leg was broke he had multiple um, facial fractures and he had major head trauma they bypassed uh, drove by two other hospitals to get him to IU Methodist because they were expertise with Indy car racing head trauma so it was about three and a half hours that I could see him so right before I got to go in I mean they had come out probably two or three times there was like 20 of us out there praying and waiting and um, I remember calling, I think my mom got some prayer chain going and, and Tanya Deckard had an uh, awesome prayer for me and some Lord given her mighty vision. So that was all encouraging. So I go back to see him 
And then they come out and say to me, me and um, his middle son, so they're like, we don't know what's happened, but there's nothing broken. And as I approached his bed, so like he's just laying with the curtain, you know, they hadn't even gotten him to an ER room, he's still just in the curtain thing. And so I just walked up to him and the swelling of his head was just so large. And as I approached him, it just shrunk. Like, and it like took me back a minute and he was crying because he had been waiting to see me. So I didn't want to cry and make him upset or like, oh no, look how you look because things weren't great. You know, it was pretty amazing. So um, I just held it together but thinking, am I supposed to be seeing that? You know, like approaching him and then his head just, now it was still swelled, but it wasn't to where it was when I first, you know, approached him. So right then I thought, God, you're doing something. Um, the three days in the hospital, he was home on the third afternoon. Um, basically, they were like, we don't even know what to do with you. Anyway, he's writing a book and telling his story on his own, so I won't say much more. But um, the Lord spoke to me through another man in another meeting about three months later. And this man approaches me. He said, hey, God wanted me to tell you that you have a gift of raising the dead, but sometimes you're not in front of the person. It's by the power of your voice and the authority for that. And I was like, whoa. So, you know, that's amazing because I was maybe 15 miles from Jason when I was on my deck and he was in the intersection. Um, he remembers, there. It, it was a blessing. A nurse was the first on the scene and um, got him clear. It was the, a blockage from how his head was laying, where the blood flew, uh, was flowing from his head. So um, that's what caused him to die. But um, he remembers waking up and coming back somewhere in the ambulance. So, and I don't say that word right. Anyway, <laughs> if he was here, he'd be joking right now with me. <laughs> anyway, so, and I'm not saying, I know so many people were praying. I don't like think, oh, I raised him from the dead. But it's something the Lord, having that word three months later from some man I don't even know that come to me, it's just the Lord just showing you know, like, just keep doing what you know to do, what, what I'm leading you to do. So obedience is a huge key in us following the Lord and just doing what he's saying to do in leading us. Um, all that to say, have you ever asked God or even thought about asking him what is stopping you from working in the fullness of, of him to further his kingdom? Um, for me, for Tammy, for Sheree, it was other things. Guilt, shame, rejection, fear, um, fear of man. You know, it could be anything, pride. Um, so those things, just to challenge you guys, to ask the Lord, is there something, Lord, stopping me from, from doing what we're called to do? We're to cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons, heal the sick. We are just to do that because Jesus lives in us. And it's nothing about us. It's everything about him and how he works in us. I love the scripture, Luke 11, 9 and 10. I'm not going to read it, but it's talking about ask, seek, and knock. So ask the Lord anything, and he's going to share with you. He loves you so much. So ask with intensity, seek relentlessly, and knock forcefully. You know, just because I have experienced the ways God's used me in different healing doesn't mean I'm just going to stop and not do anything anymore. There's always more. I mean, I love that there's older ladies here. I love how Cherie said, you know, her age and all. I love that. You ladies have gone before us. Your prayers are powerful. You know, there is so much more for you ladies to do, you know. I always would say, you can't say you're old in your 70s. Maybe 95 you can say you're old, but 70s is not old. <laughs> I mean, it's just not. <laughs> That's how I've always said that. And I'm getting closer, so it's like, it's not old. <laughs> I am not... Really, I've not had a year yet that's bothered me. And, and I think it's just my attitude where I am just totally after the Lord. And I'm hoping, 
I'm hoping if I'm alive at 95, 98, and where's Helen here, you know, she's still serving the Lord. Helen, raise your hand or stand. Yeah. So she just turned 97, and um, she still drives on her own. And before Pastor Todd came, Pastor Todd Smith visited June this last summer, and she got a few of us together, and God had given her a strategy of how to pray before he visited. So you can't tell me, you know, no matter what age you are. And, you know, we did that. It was around this building. It was coming different times of the day. And he just, he gave you a dream, I think. It was by a dream. So you ladies, you have a lot to offer. And um, I'm sure I can speak for anyone in here that we love that. We love, God never stops using us, ever, ever. So I challenge you to ask the Lord, what's keeping you from the fullness of him operating in you? Obviously, my story is totally different than Tammy's. Tammy's was totally different. Shuri, every person here, we all have our own walk that's totally different from the other. But it's, our purpose is what? To further his kingdom. Our purpose is to go and follow him. All right. I am humbled, ecstatic, and in awe at how he has led us building out life of love. It has been a joy. It really has been easy. We sometimes laugh, like, how has this even happened? Um, the people he's brought in, again, we are thrilled who he's put in our path to help with this. The best thing about it is the life change that we're seeing in the people. There have been two men in the last year, year and a half, that come on a Sunday morning and just sit in chairs two different times. And just because of whatever, God's goodness, they were delivered from 30-year addictions of whatever. We don't know. They've never shared. We don't care. But 30-some years of a struggle, and God touched these two men at two different times, and um, they were free. So... You know, it's just how he moves and works. My heart, after the Browns revival, is just like everyone has to get free. It's like, you know, are we free as we free as we can be? I mean, it's still a process. There's still things he'll, like Cherie says, you know, she's up here with her empathy and her, her crying and over things. That's just her heart. That's a sensitivity from, it's really a gift. But things that we need free of, he'll, if we're, our attitude is right, he'll always show us and give us the steps to do it. So that's what I want to do here. Um, here, obviously, at Life of Love, the altar, you know, just like most churches, the altar is a place God will heal. Sitting in your chair is where God will heal. Um, kneeling down, we know. We have this 8 by 21 foot pool spa. So God's, God saved this for us. It was in Michigan. Um, after the second visit of Pastor Todd Smith with the North Georgia Revival, the Lord spoke to us and said, do this monthly. And I was running laps because he didn't say weekly. <laughs> so Pastor Todd at Christ Fellowship Church, they do do every Sunday night a water baptism. But God told us to do it once a month. So we've been doing it now for a year and a half. And it started, I think, with what, eight people maybe? Maybe six wasn't very many people. We didn't care. We were just excited to see what God's doing because to the Lord, he'll run after the one. So we've never made it about numbers. Um, every month it has grown and increased in number. Um, last February, I believe we had 99 people in this place and about 50 in the water that night. And, and every month it's grown since then. Um, we just are loving the testimonies. How many here have heard of the North Georgia revival that's gone on for four and a half years down in the north part of Georgia in Dawsonville? Yeah, that's awesome. So Wes and Jay, I always want to say Jay and Jessica, that's their last name. I call Jay, I call Wes Jay all the time. Anyway, so they are from there and that is their home church. And you guys drive three hours to go to church? They drive three hours one way to get to Dawsonville Church. <laughs> and they have, uh, the Lord put it on their heart. We met them a year ago up in Michigan at Battle Creek. We went up to help Pastor Todd with one of the water immersion services and they have a local, kind of a, no, mobile, a mobile 
baptism. And so they're going now into Virginia, they go into Florida, they go different parts of Georgia, they're going back on their way to Michigan to do another one. So, um, you know, it's just they said yes to the Lord of what what is happening. And it really is just an extension of the North Georgia Revival on wheels, right? That's what it is, they're on wheels. So what we do here, the last Sunday of every month, we open the pool, we come in and we worship, we have a little teaching on healing or testimonies of God's goodness. Um, it's not a very long service really, but we open the pool and let the people experience Jesus in the water. So what I wanna share real quick, um, the mikvah. So is anyone here in the Hebrew, the Hebrew culture, Jesus, this was even before Jesus' day, there's a road of mikvah in Jerusalem that leads to the temple. There could be, I believe Pastor Karen said over 700 of these. And what it is, is a cleansing. Because once they get to the temple, they have to be cleansed to get in. So all these mikvahs, I don't know why this phone is going off. Um, you get in and you immerse and you're just being cleansed. It's a purification before you would get to the temple. And when, when the Lord came in to Christ Fellowship four and a half years ago and showed Pastor Todd his baptismal full of water, now the tank was empty, but he looks over and he sees it full of water and fire burning on the top. And Jesus spoke to him and said, I'm gonna baptize my people with Holy Spirit fire. So they opened the pool and I think four, eight people get in, same kind of just little number gets in that Sunday night. And they noticed one man got in with his mother and he had um, eczema and he comes out and he was, his skin was totally clear. So Pastor Todd is a Baptist, former Baptist pastor, um, has been spirit filled for about 10 years, I believe, maybe 12. But they didn't really know the fullness of what was happening in the water. So they just keep doing it week after week. I forget this is week 200 and probably 50 something now. They go by weeks. Um, two months after that revival began, it started February 2018, um, they went to Jerusalem or Israel and did it. They had already had this trip planned, so they go. And the tour guide starts talking about the mikvah and the whole explanation of it. And Karen's looking over and going, Todd, this is what our pool is. So she totally got it right away. And then she, uh, she is a teacher. And I will share that in a minute about Caneo, but actor, actually a doctorate now. She has her doctorate. So Dr. Karen, but she had studied so much into this. It's truly what is happening when people are getting in the water. We're just cleansing. It does not negate at all your baptism. Our baptism experience is that. We have had first time baptisms in our pool. Um, the immersion is powerful. Who here, raise your hands if you've been immersed anywhere, whether it be Dawsonville here. Yeah, so a lot of you have been experienced the immersion. It is powerful. Here's some of our own here. Um, I'm telling you guys, you can't make this up when you see the people's countenance. You come up out of the water and their face totally changes in front of you. You know, you know God's doing something in their soul. A lot of soul healing, a lot of healing with our mind, emotions, um, our will. You know, when our will's a mess, we're not lined up to what the Spirit of God wants. You know, when it's, when it's our will, we could be choosing some bad things or wrong things. But when the Spirit's leading our will, you know, so this is so good for so many people. There are so many people that have come out of the water and said, I don't really know, but I'm not even thinking like I used to think. You know, some people have said, um, I've never not had voices in my head. They were so free. Their mind had never been that clear. We've seen many physical healings from stage four cancers to surgeries canceled. Um, we had a lady with, um, in fact, it was so funny, Jason ministered to her. She gets in and she's limping, and, but she asked for back pain, you know, that God would heal her back pain. And he said, well, what are you limping about? She said, oh, I'm having surgery next week. It's a plantar fasciitis. I've had it for several years, and it's just excruciating pain. He said, well, 
when I immerse you, why don't you just ask Jesus to take that? So what's so funny is she was running around the pool, like yelling, and she canceled her surgery. So God healed her back, and he healed the plantar fasciitis um, in her foot, the foot issue. There's just so much, like we really could write a book just on testimonies of what we've seen. Almost 2,000 people have been in our pool. And I believe um, about 50,000 in Dawsonville. But what's happened is when Pastor, Star, Pastor Todd started going around to the different states, he's been to other countries as well, but um, he said there was four or five churches that seemed to really just be on fire, that this was just what God had for us. And Martinsville was one of them here at Life of Love. Um, he, he would come and visit. I mean, we sent him reports you know, from our Sunday nights. It's just, he, he says there's just something about this, this region. Well, what is our region known for? Healing artesian water, right? Artesian waters. So um, we had water back in the early 1900s, late, um, we, we had water that people from all over the world came here to get in the water, get in our mineral baths. We had 12 sanitariums and they were beautiful hotels and they would come and sit in the water for healing. I, I know I read an account one time, a prince from another country came. So we were well known. You know, we have a big sign downtown, City of Mineral Water, you know, and it lights up at night. And that was just restored about four or five years ago. Uh, the, the, it wasn't lit and no one really cared for it to be lit, um, but it got restored. So we were just thinking that was funny. We were just barely a church a year old when uh, the Lord led us to Pastor Todd, really for this reason, I believe. Um, I feel like the Lord, um, again, 30 some years ago, um, past, or Prophet Schreckengast, he came through and he had a word that God was gonna open the waters again for healing in our region. And Tammy and I were in the same meeting, we have notes of it. It's just amazing to see, you know, the full circle of things, and here we have our pool. Um, we've had visions recently of different people sharing us. People in wheelchairs will be healed. Um, we've had two people in wheelchairs come in since then, not necessarily to get in the water, but just come in our building. So we're anticipating what God's doing. You see what I'm saying? Like, we don't go and run to them and say, oh, you gotta get in the water. We totally respect what God's doing in people's lives, you know. God will speak to you when you need to get in the water. But we just want to make it available that this is another way God heals, that God moves. Um, it's just an extension of the altar. Pastor Todd laughs and says, um, you're just getting wet over there. <laughs> Here at the altar, you're dry. Over there, you're getting wet. So it's just so neat just to see how God's moving. Um, so the water immersion services are the last Sunday of every month at six o'clock. So if you know anyone that is struggling with um, anything, we, we've had addictions, people with addiction issues. I mean, it could be anything. It doesn't matter. When you get in the water, you kind of forget about what you're in there for anyway because Jesus' presence is mighty, isn't it? Can everyone testify to that? It is a whole nother ball game of what he's doing. You know, this is a nameless and faith, faith faceless move of God because he's doing the work. It's not about Pastor Todd Smith. It's just he's going with it. He's literally following the Lord in this. He does not get, he gets no credit for it. It's what Jesus is doing. So you're all invited to mark your calendar on a Sunday, the last Sunday of the month, and come join us and experience it. Bring a change of clothes and a towel and see for yourself how good God is. We also, um, another way is getting in the Word and doing a Bible study. And we've got, um, it's a nine month Caneo class. Dr. Karen Smith, that's Pastor Todd's wife, she leads this September through early June. And um, amazing, amazing. Not only you learn the life of Jesus, but also his culture. And many things in the Word that we're getting uh, from pastors in the pulpit are kind of maybe sometimes mis misinterpreted because she digs into the Greek and, Greek and Hebrew, which is the culture of their day. 
where we have our English translations that sometimes mess things up and we don't get the fullness of the word. Does that make sense? This is a powerful, who here, raise your hand if you've had year one or two of Caneo. Yeah, you could do it online. Um, Jason's in year three. This year they offered a degree program so you can actually get a bachelor's degree now from doing this. And Faye, what did you say the price was? 1200 a year for the degree program, which is not bad um, compared to other colleges. It's online. She is a phenomenal teacher. Teaching is her gift. So she is electrifying and striking. Like you cannot take your eyes off of the screen and you'll be taking notes and notes and notes because she's just powerful in how she teaches. So Kadeo, this is an old, I, I left all this stuff over here at the visitor center. Um, this is an old one, but you can still go to kaneomtc.com and look for next year. Okay, so that's an option. We have our own, um, oh, this is the water immersion sheets. They're over there, half sheet. It tells you every date of the Sunday. Of course, our year is about in, ending. We have, uh, we do not meet on in December, okay? Just because it's always around Christmas and we know so many people are busy. Um, about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, this book is speaking in tongues. I believe it's over there. There's only three or four left. You guys, this is a controversial topic. It always has been. Um, but this book is so easy to read and understand. And, and when we read and understand the fullness, then you'll be, oh, well, that's, that makes sense. This is the easiest book to understand about speaking in tongues and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing goofy about it. Uh, we have our own Tammy that you all know. Tammy, you heard her. She has access ministries, the little cards over there, um, for her one-on-one -on -one session. She also started once a month, is going to be a painting class, I believe. And um, so she, the first one she ha held, how many do you have, 12 or 13 women or more? 11 painted and 14 people showed up. So it was an awesome time. Um, and her healing encounters, that's what I'm looking for. Don't tell me. We're out of flyers. Okay. No, that's okay. So healing encounters is the first Monday of every month at 630. Okay. So take notes if you need to. Um, you always can find me on Facebook, Tammy on Facebook. Um, healing encounters is another powerful tool the Lord is using to uh, break walls down really in people's lives you know when we recognize lies that brings freedom right so I just wanted to um, bless you all with um, oh back to the dunamis power I forgot to say this the dunamis power is really about his light and glory and you guys can all go do a study. There's so many scriptures about Jesus' light and glory. And there is power in that. You know how they've made for, um, this has been out for years. What's the red, um, what's the red line, the laser, laser light? Um, think the technology that they use now in the medical field for laser, the laser and how they even do surgeries. Just all the different stuff for lasers. You know, if you think about Jesus' light, even more powerful than that. So if you have free time, do a little study on Jesus' light and glory because um, you'll, you'll be amazed at how that is a key in the dunamis power. It is, it is his power. It's, it lives in us. It says the resurrection life is in us. You know, how he rose from the dead, that power lives in us. So if we all operate the way we're supposed to, we can change this world with us, our little faces right here in this room, you know. So just to be encouraged to go out and, and do what you're called to do. What you see here up front, um, anyone that has any issue that you think may be stopping you from fully serving the Lord and fully going forward in Him, um, I, I would love for you to come up what this is, we, we took this from cleansing stream, guilt, shame, fear, um, fear of man, um, pride, rejection. I feel like 
the enemy uses lies and rejection to keep people in states of um, places in life so they cannot succeed to follow the Lord. Does that make sense? Not even to find their true identity. It's almost like identity um, theft. Yeah, it really is. He uses rejection and lies. So anything, any lady, guilt, shame, what we're going to do is pour a little bit of water on your face. What's the scripture? Um, did I not write it in here? I've got it. I love this scripture. I hope I can find it. They looked to him. It's Psalms 34, 5. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. And we did this for guilt and shame at Cleansing Stream. But when I was getting the message ready, the Lord said, it's for anything. So what you're going to do is have a little water in your hand, just wipe your face, and just say, Lord, take that from me. You know, he does it. It's his work. There will be some prayer ladies around. Um, so I, if I can have Darlene and the other helpers, they, they're going to put a little bit of water on your hands. And then you just put it on your face if the... Um, we can have people coming in this way, and then the outer, so we have four, four places here. I just, I wanted to have enough bowls that um, we could go th through this fairly quickly. But have some time with the Lord and ask him um, what it is that could be stopping you from fully being what you need to be for his kingdom. All right, I'm going to pray a minute. Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for every person in the sound of my voice. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Jesus, we just release your light and glory among these ladies, these beautiful women. We ask, Father, that you continue to heal, raise them up into all that you have for them. Thank you for the people that they're around every day of their lives, that they could be mighty ministers. We do this all, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if anyone wants to come up and um, experience